What about lab meat if they develop it? It seems like they're claiming they're very close to developing lab hamburger. What about it? Well, I haven't seen anything in, in the 45 years of work I've done that came out of a lab that was at all helpful. So I, I can't comment on something that doesn't exist, but it doesn't seem sensible to me. Oh, I did see a picture of it. It looks disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I don't, why do we have to go to these extremes, you know? And, and we're looking, like, the way we grow um, grains and corn and soy and everything now, because we, we're, uh, like, with genetic mani manipulation, with Monsanto thinking, we gotta grow tons, and the quality is just uh, watered down when we do that, because we use pesticides and fertilizers. And we pay a big price with cancer and all kinds of autism related. And, you know, it, it turns to a big epigenetic problem. So, no, we sure don't want meat to be GMO made and uh, uh, made from um, laboratories. We don't need any such thing. I think um, I haven't seen the product and can't vouch for what it is or isn't, but I think that the problem is that when people try to eat a better version of a terrible diet, they never end up better off. And so what we're doing when we suggest that if you're eating animal food 10 times a week, now you eat this lab-created animal food, we're missing the discussion that really needs to take place, which is that the entire dietary pattern needs to change. Um, and, and if we don't have that discussion, then people aren't gonna get better. I mean, the vast majority of people coming into my office have, they're trying to eat a health-promoting diet. They're doing it wrong. Like as Dr. Davis said, they're eating chicken instead of beef thinking that they're better off. Well, if you don't change anything except you're eating the lab meat instead of the other meat and you're still consuming dairy and processed foods and junk and crap and you've been dehydrated since 1972, I don't think you're gonna be a whole lot better off. So that's my basic opposition to it. I can't really talk about the quality of it at this point, but I think we're missing the point. I agree with all that. And from a nutritional standpoint, if it's identical to meat, then it's gonna have the identical um, implications in your body. However, I have people that come to me all the time that say, I don't want to give this up. They, they just really don't want to give it up. So if they, or I don't even care, just give me a pill. I really have clients that say that to me. So the question then is, well, then you're going to do less damage to the environment and to the animals by eating a lab-grown version of this. And if, that's, if you really don't care about your health and you're doing this because you just really don't care, and believe me, I see this all the time, then at least it's saving animals and saving, hopefully, environmental resources. I don't know the replications on the environment as of yet, though. I don't know if you're going to ask us this, but it, it kind of ties back to this grass-fed meat. Like, there's a type of meat that's a good meat and a type of meat that's bad. Now, grass-fed meat has more omega-3, so it's slightly better. But, and I put this in my talk today, there's many reasons that meat is bad for you, and we know the mechanism of action. It raises IGF-1, whether it's a cow in a grass, whether it's a cow in a CAFO, or whether it's in a um, petri, uh, petri dish. It has heme iron, whether it's in any of those scenarios. It when it's grilled, because you're going to grill this meat eventually, it forms heterocyclic amines, which are a known carcinogen. I could go on and on and on. Heme, iron, uh, new 5DC, all these things are still going to be in that lab meat, and they're still going to affect the human physiology the way any other animal does.